the name of this topic is production possibility curve so if we don't go too much in the details right now but just want to gauge an idea of what it deals with let's do it with an example suppose you are really very hungry and there are two options either you can have maggi or you can have apple or actually a combination of both production possibility curve studies all possible combinations which can be made out of two options so saying that let's think that if you are really very hungry either option number 1 could be eat 3 bricks of maggi and zero apples or there can be another option that i can eat one apple and two bricks of maggi and then can be you know then can then can another be third option that i can have three apples and one brick of maggi by all these options i can satisfy my hunger right so this is in short you know this is a short version of production possibility curve production possibility curve actually i can break it down production possibilities and curve so production possibilities is these different options 3 maggi 0 apple 2 maggi 1 apple and 1 maggi 3 apple and when i put it down on a graph then i can add the third word production possibility curve now given a chance you would like to have you know best of everything let's let's look at the example again given a chance you would like to eat 3 bricks of maggi and because you also love apple you would like to eat 3 apples but the point is the maximum maggi that is 3 bricks of maggi and maximum apple that is 3 apples both are not a possibility i cannot have 3 maggis plus 3 apples because my stomach will like burst out right so i know given a chance we would like the best of every alternatives but because our stomach is the resource is scarce i cannot put beyond a certain limit of food in my stomach i cannot have the best of the both circumstances right so that's why i have to compromise something to get something and this compromising something to get something is also called as opportunity cost likewise we saw here that we if we had 3 bricks of maggi how many apples could we have we could have zero apples but if we instead of 3 bricks if we thought okay let's see two bricks we compromised one brick of maggi but in when we compromise that one brick of maggi what do we gain we gain one apple right so this is where it comes this is called the opportunity cost the opportunity cost of one brick of maggi is one apple now let's get into the depth of ppc and to understand this let's let's look at this graph on the y axis we have toasters or on the x axis we have toothbrushes now let's imagine for a moment that we have a shop and in our shop we sell toasters and we also sell toothbrushes now given on any ideal day i would love to sell both as much as possible i would love to sell the maximum amount of toasters and also the maximum amount of toothbrush but the problem is to sell maximum amount of toasters and to sell maximum amount of toothbrush i need to buy them and to buy them i need money and my money is limited so let's look at the first option that we can do we can either buy 35 toasters and sell them and at this point we'll be having money to buy zero toothbrushes and as and when you can see when we move on the right hand side of the x axis that is from zero toothbrush to 10 toothbrush we can see that how much how many toasters can we buy we can buy something between 30 to 35 right so we had to leave maybe one or two toasters to get those 10 toothbrushes and similarly if you want to buy close to about 70 toothbrushes you need to buy zero of toasters right so this is how the matrix falls let's see another matrix that is this one if i want to buy 30 toasters 
with the remaining money that I have, how many toothbrushes can I buy? I can buy exactly 30 toothbrushes, right? Can you get the point? So understanding this, this comes to point number A. Similarly, we have drawn different possibilities like one another possibility is let's buy 25 toasters and let's buy 50 toothbrush and this point is point number C. Then we got point number D. We also got point number B and we have many other points inside this. Like we can have another point number E at 25 toasters and 20 toothbrush, right? So you can practically see there is this one dark line which comes up to down, which has points A and D on it. Now this dark line is my production possibility frontier. Frontier means the maximum I can attain. And given a chance, anyone likes maximum profits. So he wants to do maximum work. So what are the maximum opportunities that I have? The maximum opportunities that I have is 30 toasters, 30 toothbrushes, 25 toasters, 40 toothbrushes, 20 toasters, 50 toothbrushes, 15 toasters and somewhere between 50 to 60 toothbrushes. 10 toasters and 60 toothbrushes, 5 toasters and somewhere between 60 to 70 toothbrush. So all these different possibilities are possible and these possibilities have formed this line which is the production possibility curve. Now this line is the maximum that I can attain. Beyond this like the point C is unattainable. Why it is unattainable? Because I don't have the budgets every morning to buy that thing. I cannot buy 25 toasters and 50 toothbrush. If I buy 25 toasters, all I can buy is 40 toothbrushes. Got my point, right? So this, the point outside the PPC are unattainable points. While as the points inside the PPC are points that I haven't using my util, I ha I'm not using my resources to the full. Why am I buying only 20 toasters and 30 toothbrushes? That is point B. I can where where I can buy 20 toasters and 50 toothbrushes. So that's way I can sell more of 20 toothbrushes and I can get that profit. So why won't I do it? Right? So the point outside the PPC are called unattainable and the point inside the PPC are resources unutilized. And the best points are the points which comes on the PPC, which land on the PPC, the all the various possibilities that we looked at, which were resulting onto a point that reached the PPC. Now is point C attainable? Yes, point C is attainable. But for that, I have to infuse more capital, right? I have to bring more capital from home and put it into my business that I can buy 25 toasters and I can also buy 50 toothbrushes. So, if I increase my capital, my PPC will have a movement and that movement will be towards a right hand side. This is called as right hand shift, right? This is called as right hand shift. Similarly, if because of some reasons I have to withdraw money from my business and my capital decreases, I might not be even able to get point A and D and I will only be able to get point B. This is a leftward shift in the production possibility curve. So till now we know what PPC is. PPC is the combination of all different possibilities. The PPC frontier is the combination of all best possibilities. Beyond the frontier is unattainable at the moment. Within the frontier is under utilization of resources. Can I go to beyond the frontier? Yes. Increase your resources. And can I go beyond? Yes. If your resources are decreasing, you have to go within your PPC point. Clear? Now, so as my opportunity cost is not similar every time, like one toaster for one toothbrush or one toaster for five toothbrushes every time, that is the reason that my PPC is concave because my opportunity cost is not same. If my opportunity cost was same every time, the amount or, or my PPC would be a linear line. This is a very important element. Please understand it as this is asked in a lot of exam that when will PPC be linear? 
when the opportunity cost is same then it will be linear now ppc has many names and the names are production possibility frontier production possibility boundary transformation curve transformation boundary and transformation frontier please memorize all these names as it is very important and they ask them a lot in mcq also in the end i would like you to know some assumptions on which ppc works the first assumption the amount of resources in an economy is fixed that means every morning when you woke up when you had to buy toothbrushes and toaster the amount of capital is fixed it neither increases nor decreases second with the help of given resources only two goods can be produced ppc only works for two goods because it's a graph with only x axis and y axis there is no z axis it's not a 3d graph third point the resources are fully and efficiently utilized there is zero wastage it never happens that i bought a toaster and i am not able to sell it because it was defective all the toasters and all the toothbrushes i buy are working in a very good manner so these are the three assumptions on which production possibility curve works now please go and solve mcqs as they are really very important